Hey there everyone, I'm Michael, and welcome to another Little Big Planet video. Uh, this is another video on the single player co-op series that I've, I've sort of started. Um, yesterday's was more of a tutorial on how to do it, um, or on how to do this whole little multiple character control setup here, where we have the two sackbots and we can control them with the one controller, and switch between the characters. Um, in this video, I'm gonna try to sort out checkpoints, which is sort of the next piece of this whole puzzle here. Now, checkpoints are somewhat complicated, and this is not going to be so much of a tutorial as it is just me figuring it out with you guys, and showing you guys along the way. So you may still learn something, it's just that I'm not exactly teaching it this time around. So it's not going to be as fluent as the previous video. But still, you should find it fairly interesting. Um, anyway, what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna go ahead and delete this whole thing here, that entire border, uh, because I wanna go ahead and extend this whole play area out here. Um, so we're gonna grab some basic cardboard and static physics and a square, and we're gonna make sure that we are gridded up properly. Alright, and then... There we go. Proper depth. So I'm going to extend this whole area out here. Alright, so now we have a little bit more play space here. Um, so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to start this off with our normal checkpoints here. Um, so I'm going to grab a normal little big planet one checkpoint here um so there it is this is it um i'm gonna place it in the back here uh nor or maybe right there uh, so we're gonna place one down and we're gonna place another one down someone somewhere over here and then what i'm gonna go ahead and do is i'm actually gonna take this level start gate and i'm gonna move it over because this is actually an actual level i'm working on it's a Pokemon level, uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and hide that, and we're gonna take this start gate, and this is just so that I can go into play mode and test things out. Um, we're gonna move it over here. Now, I do actually plan to use this area eventually, but for now, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and ha have it placed right here. Um, then what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to grab these sack bots here and kind of just position them so that they're... Uh, this is going to take me a little bit. Um, position them so that they are just underneath that checkpoint there, or that start gate. Um, so if I hit play... spawn in and then we end up becoming a part of or we become this character here um so this is i mean this is checkpoints you walk in front of it and it activates and then you have four lives or eight or infinite lives um and this works you can walk in front of the other one and there you go so that works but there are a lot of problems with this, with this whole multi- or single-player co-op thing. Um, which is one of them I'm trying to solve, one of them I have already solved, and I'm gonna show you guys that. Um, but let's- let's do two things here. We're gonna go ahead and go into our poppet here, and we're gonna kill our character. So the first issue is you can immediately tell that the character does not die. Um, but we do lose a life. That's something that I'm not going to solve in this video. Um, the real problem is that we've, we're controlling this character, which I'm going to call Richie for now. Let's say we switch to Ash, and then we do the same thing. First of all, we would expect to have the full four lives, because Ash hasn't lost a life yet. He, he's never died, but this checkpoint shows otherwise. Um... And if I go ahead and try to kill Ash here... You can see now that I have two lives left. 
And it doesn't matter which character I play as, I have two lives left. Alright. So that's that's a problem because minus a bunch of other issues that are gonna crop up as we get this working, this is a cooperative level. And in normal little big planet, I'm just gonna go into crate mode so that, that buzzer doesn't annoy me, but in normal little big planet, when it when the first player dies, the second player still gets to continue on in the level till they get to the next checkpoint, and then the first player will spawn in. Um and even then each player has their own life counter. So if I'm on my last life and I have my friend playing with me and I die, my friend gets to keep going. He still has hopefully four lives remaining. Um so we've gotta find some way of implementing that. And we're gonna start that off here. So basically the whole idea here is we're gonna get rid of this checkpoint for now. The whole idea here is we need to sort of abuse a quirk with the way the game's checkpoint system works. So I'm gonna grab a sticker panel here, and it's gonna be static physics. Alright? And we're gonna put this right above the checkpoint for now. Um, I'm gonna make sure that it lines up even. Um, that's the wrong gridding mode. I want me- I don't want rotation, I want medium grid. So you're gonna put that right above the hack point. Um, and of course, because this is a logic piece, we're gonna go ahead and make it invisible. Like so. Then what we actually need is we need two checkpoints here. So we're going to go four layers back with this one. One, two, three, four. Alright. Um, and we're going to go ahead and make sure that it is um, dynamic physics, like it is. And then we're going to take it, and then we're going to copy it. And go four layers forward. Um, so, it looks like there's only one checkpoint here, but in fact there's two. Now, the whole idea here is we're going to somehow need to swap these checkpoints in place and kind of hide the, the other one. Um, so in fact, well, I actually made a mistake, so I want to set up the logic first. Um, so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to take this checkpoint and I'm going to grab a microchip and place a microchip on it. Alright? Um, so... It doesn't really matter where you place it, just as long as you can easily access it. So this checkpoint is now script er, scripted, which is good. Now, it needs to be dynamic physics, but we actually need to make it so that it floats in the air wherever we place it, because the position of this checkpoint is very, very critical um, for the illusion to work. So we're going to grab an anti-gravity tweaker here, and we're going to make sure that the um, anti-gravity is full 100 percent and damping um and zero buoyancy damping you want to leave at zero uh yes the 100 percent anti-gravity is enough to make this thing um float and that's good um so if we have this floating we're good to go as far as that goes um the next thing that we want to actually do is first of all move this over because i want to organize my ship um we're going to need a physics tweaker, and this is because I want the heck point to be, um, I don't want the heck point to collide with things as it moves around. I want to be able to move it freely throughout the level. It should be able to collide with things, or to intersect craft materials and all that stuff, so this is going to do that. So a physics material with the collision turned off. And that's going to give us the effect of basically being able to do this. You could also de-physicalize it, but um, I'm not going to do that. Anyway, um, now we need to set up some sort of way to sort of move this checkpoint out of where's, where our playable space is going to be when this checkpoint is not supposed to be active. Um, so the way I want to do that is to grab a remote tag sensor. Alright? And we're going to put it on the board. 
Now, we need to take note of the tags that we set up for our controls. The one, the same ones that enable and disable the control animators. And for me, I know that's going to be blue, and I want this checkpoint to be activated when Ritchie is the active character. Um, so this is going to be a blue Ritchie sensor. And you can see that it's active now. And that's kind of not good. We want this to be inverted. Um, the reason for this is when the character's active, we want this to be pushed in. But when it's inactive, we don't... we, we want it to be pushed out. Um, so we're going to do that. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to grab a counter. Alright, we're going to grab four of them. Um, um, the first two that we're going to place are going to be kind of sort of like this. They're going to be small. And the next two that we're going to place are going to be longer. So we're going to put these on the board here. And we're going to move those down. Um, okay, so the... Okay, so these longer time or longer counters, we want to set these up so that they're the amount of layers we want to move back. So in this case, I know it's going to be four. So I'm going to set them both to four. All right. Um, so that's four and that's four. All right. Then the smaller ones, we're going to set them to one. These are going to be pulse generators. All right. Um, and in fact, I lied to you, these don't need- or these should be timers, not counters. Um, so the short ones should be replaced with timers, and they should be 0.1 second timers. Set to on-off. So, with the game paused, we're gonna go ahead and take these timers and wire them up to be self-resetting. And we're going to go ahead and, yeah, so they're all self-resetting. And then what we're going to do is, when they do generate a pulse, we're going to tick their corresponding counter up. Whoops. Alright. So that should end up looking like, or actually we're not done. We're going to make sure... That, first of all, our headset battery is actually charging, not dying, and about to die while we're recording a video. Um, but we also want to make sure that the counters reset themselves as well. Um, so we're going to go ahead and wire that into itself, and then wire this one into itself. And that should end up looking like something like this. So you can see we've got two really fast pulsing timers here, and they're counting up counters that are all set to four. And that's good. Um, so far, so good. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and um, we're going to grab a selector here. And it needs to be two ports. And basically what we need to do is select which timer we want to pulse. Um, um, in fact, I want it to be actually three ports. Um, so this one is going to be port one, and we're going to wire port one into that first timer, and then we're going to wire port two into that second timer. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set this one's current time to zero. There we go, to fix it. And then this one we're going to set to zero as well to fix it. And then what we're going to do is for um, for these counters, when they pulse, we, we actually want to go ahead and set the um, selector state to port 3. Um, so this OR gate is going to do as that. We're going to set to port 3. And then... So this is going to be sort of our idle, we're not doing anything state. So we're going to take this one and we're going to wire it into port 2 of the OR gate. Right? And then we're going to take this one that's currently pulsing here and wire it in. 
right? So that should... That should do that. That's gonna pause the whole thing. Um, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this up so that one of these timers pulse it or moves the um the checkpoint back and the other moves it forward um so the one that moves it back is going to be our um hmm. let me think um so we're going to go ahead and actually we're going to delete this whole thing here um Okay, I, I did this wrong. I, I did this completely wrong. I apologize. Um, what I actually want to do is I want to set this to be a two-port selector. And um, what I want to do is whenever these... Um, whenever these pulse, what we're going to do is we're going to switch them back. So this one's on selector port 2, so, that, or, so it's going to go ahead and be on port 1 when it's done. So that's going to cause these to start pulsing. Um, then we want this one to go to selector port 2. So you can see that they start pulsing like that. Now, um, <laughs> this is kind of cool for creating a police light strobe effect. I just realized this would be perfect for that, but, um, that's not what we're gonna do. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add some AND gates here. Um, between these selectors and their actual outputs here. So we're gonna add one here. And one here. Um, so we're gonna do is we're gonna have this one pulse the second AND gate. And we're gonna have this one pulse the first AND gate. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this tag. And we're gonna go ahead and have it wire into that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a NOT gate coming out of that tag sensor. And it's going to go into... Into, um... Yeah, so it's going to go into that other AND gate there. So we're going to wire this into the NOT gate. There we go. Um, and then what we're going to do is... Out, or these AND gates are going to be what pulses the timer. And then... Likewise, we're going to do the same up here. And then what's going to happen is the entire thing is just going to go and break itself, okay? That's okay. We're going to go ahead and make this work. So we're going to reset those timers, and we should be able to see this in action here. What we're going to do is we're going to grab this... Oh, whoops, 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 whoops. We're going to grab this whole board here. And we're going to become one of the characters. And we should be able to see it pulse. So right now we're Ash. And if I switch to Richie, what should happen is that selector should completely change its state. Alright, and then we're going to switch back to Ash. And you can see the timer's doing their thing. Um, so now what we need to do is... Get out of that whole control seat here. We're going to move this back up. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to set this whole thing up so that the um, checkpoint moves in and out of the layer. So we're going to use an in-out mover here. And we're going to place two of them. Alright, and then the first one we're going to tweak right now. The movement speed is going to be 100%. Alright, so that's good. And we're going to copy it, and we're going to put another one down. The only difference is that this one is going to move out a layer. Alright. So then what we're going to do is we're going to take this timer here, and when it pulses, we're going to move, or we're going to trigger this in-out mover. And when this timer pulses, we're going to trigger this in-out mover. Alright. So now we should be able to move this checkpoint around. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go into one of these characters. 
And we're going to switch between and see if it moves into the background. So as you can see, it does. Now it's not exactly fast, and that kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Um, I'm not really sure how to get around that just yet, the whole thing that it's like very um, slow. Um, however, there is something else that we can do, and that is we can activate an opacity tweaker on this whole checkpoint so that it does actually hide itself in the background when it's not active. Um, so the way we do that is, of course, we grab an opacity tweaker, and then um, we're going to set this to zero, and to zero. We're going to put it on the board, and then what's going to happen here is whenever um, the second port here is active, we're actually going to go ahead and activate the opacity tweaker. So let's see how that works in preview. As you can see, it went dark there, and it came back. But if I go into preview mode, uh, we should be able to see that it just looks like a normal checkpoint. Alright, so you can sort of see it working there. Now what we need to do is we need to make a copy of this. And we're going to move four layers back. And then, on this checkpoint, what we're going to go ahead and do is change the tag so that it is Richie. Or, not Richie, Ash. So Ash catch him. You can see right there, it kind of screwed itself over. It moved itself even further back. That's not what I wanted to do. Um, but at least we know that it is, in fact, seeing Ash, so we're gonna go ahead and grab that, if we can, and move it back up into place. Even though I do think that it moved itself way too far close, so we're gonna go ahead... Way too far close, that's a sentence. Um, yeah, so, one, two, three, four, there we go. So if we go into play mode, you can see, or if we go into preview mode, you can see that there's no checkpoint back there. It just looks like there's a normal checkpoint that we walk in front of. And that's good. Um, so we're going to take this character here, and we're actually going to do one more test. I'm not great, or I'm not terribly happy with the animation, but um, it works. We're going to go ahead and position these characters once again so that they are underneath that start gate. And then we're going to go into play mode here and see how this works in play mode. So, we go over here, and we activate this very inconspicuous checkpoint. Alright, it's golden. Now we're going to switch characters. And you can see there's a slight problem. The checkpoint kind of deactivates itself. However, if I kill myself and respawn and switch characters, you can see that it does actually have separate lives now, which is what we're trying to achieve here. And if I go back to this checkpoint, you can see that it kept the life counter. So it works. So the only thing we need to do now is properly activate whichever checkpoint it is that we want to activate whenever it's time to activate it. So, the way we do that is with that sticker panel up here. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a hip on it. And... We are gonna go ahead and... Um, inside this hip, we're gonna go ahead and grab a player sensor. And we're gonna put, or we're gonna put it on the board. 
And we want to match this up so that it is about in the same exact position as the active checkpoint. Like so. Um, so in front of the checkpoint. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the radius of the player sensor is about identical to what the checkpoint itself is detecting. So I'd say right about here would be good enough. Um, so that's what this player sensor is going to do. It's going to sense the player when we walk in front of the checkpoint, and that's what we want. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to... We're going to grab another counter here. Right? Um, so this counter is going to be small. It's going to be one item. And it's going to be a self-resetting counter. This is our one frame pulse generator. And we're going to wire the player sensor into it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have this output to a tag. And this tag is going to be red, and we're going to call it checkpoint. Alright, so, um, actually we're not done. We're going to need an AND gate, and this AND gate is going to have the timer, or the counter pulse in here, and it's going to output to the heck point here, and then what we're going to need is, so you can see it pulse there for a sec when I stopped hovering, but we're going to need a selector with two ports, and what we're basically going to go ahead and do is we're going to say, okay, if we are on selector port 1, then we're going to activate that timer here. And then we're going to move to selector port 2. Alright, um, and then what we're going to do is, if we are on selector port 2, so in this case, we are, we, we're here. Um, what we're going to do is, now we need to check which player is active. Um, so we're going to need to expand this board out a little. And then we're going to grab a... We're going to grab two AND gates. With two ports in them. And we're going to put the selector port 2 inside of the first port of both AND gates. And then what we're going to do is we're going to grab two uh, tag sensors. Remote tag sensors. And they're both going to be blue, and they're going to detect our characters. So we're going to set these up here. This one is going to be Ash. Um, once I select the label, of course. And this one is going to be Richie. And then you can see what this is going for right now. Um, Alright, so we're going to wire that in, and then basically these are our outputs for our active checkpoint. So you can see that we have one checkpoint in the front here. We want to make sure that we match these up with the ones that's, that are going to be active, so we're going to go into this one and make sure um, whichever tag this is, it's going to be the one that's inactive. So this is Richie, we're going to wire Ash's AND gate into it. Or... No, we're going to wire Richie's AND gate into it. I forgot. Um, so we're going to wire Richie into this one. And we're going to hide, and then we're going to wire the other one into the background one. I really hope I wired that correctly. That would be a damn shame if I wired it in, into the microchip instead. That would piss me off so much. Um, let's hope that I didn't. I have no idea what I did. I guess the only way to test this out is to be in play mode. Um, wait. Yep, I wired into the microchip. Oops. 
Yeah, maybe don't do that. Um, so we don't have a hip coming, or we don't have a wire coming out of that hand gate, so we're gonna go ahead and take this and go ahead and make sure that we don't wire into the microchip, but instead we mic or we wire into the checkpoint itself. Like so. Um, so that's gonna activate Richie if he's the active character, and then activate Ash if he's the inactive character. Now we need a way to deactivate this checkpoint, which is where that red checkpoint tag comes in. What we're gonna do is we are gonna grab a remote tag sensor. Um, we're gonna set this to red and we're gonna set it to checkpoint. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna check if we are on port 2 and we get this signal. So we're going to grab the port 2 output here. So if we're on port 2 and we get this signal, which is going to happen after we trigger at checkpoint, not when we trigger at checkpoint, but if we get that signal and we're on port 2, then we're going to switch back to port 1, which is going to deactivate this checkpoint. Um, to make sure that it doesn't keep switching when we go back and forth. Um, so let's give it a try. Um... This one should still be the active start date. There we go. And it is. We're good. So let's try walking in front of the checkpoint. So it's active. Then we're going to switch characters. You can see that the game is automatically switching which checkpoint is our active checkpoint. And if we kill a character... You can see that as we switch characters here, it remembers our checkpoint. Or our li life counter um, for that character. Which is good, that's what we want. Now the animation kind of sucks, but <laughs> you, you can at least see that functionally this is working. Um, so, what we're gonna do now is, I'm gonna create multiple checkpoints, and I'm gonna show you a bug that, that, or a forever a flaw with this whole setup. So we're gonna hide this platform, and, nope, hide it. We're gonna select this entire little contraption. And we're gonna copy-paste it. Somewhere about over here. So we're gonna we're gonna go through this and it's it's gonna work basically how we expect it to, uh, which is good. But there's gonna be an issue that I'm gonna tell you guys. So we're gonna activate this checkpoint here, which you know it works. And then we can activate this one, and then. We're gonna kill our character. So this one has three lives now. So we go over here and we're gonna make sure that this one has four. And it does. That's good. And we're gonna go back over. And this one has three. So that all works. That whole test passes. Um, so now we're gonna go over here. We're gonna test this one out. We're gonna switch characters. You're gonna see there was a slight problem over there. It activated this one for some reason. It should not have done that. That might be due down to just a player sensing bug. Yeah, so I'm gonna walk right in front of it. No, there, there is definitely a bug going on here. And I'm not sure why. Um... It's trying. Uh, it's a little finicky. I might actually increase the player sensing a little bit, to be honest. I'm not sure what's going on there with the weirdness, or with the weird 
yeah, there's definitely something messy, but that's not the bug that I wanted to show you guys. The bug that I wanted to show you guys is... Actually, let's say that I switch to this character here, which has, you know, this... This many lives. So we're gonna kill the character. And as you can see, now we're on our last life. So, one of two things is gonna happen. Either we kill ourselves again as this character, and... There goes the level. We failed. Um, which is a problem. We want the other character to be able to step in. Um, which we can't really do. Um... Thank you, PlayStation, for telling me that my battery is low and that it needs to be charged and that I am using a wireless controller. Uh, so give me a sec to plug this in while it loads, but, um, actually I didn't want to go back into create mode. Um, we're gonna save changes here after we plug in the controller. Um, the problem is that, first of all, when the first player died, the second player never had a chance, and that... That's not something you can really fix, and I'm going to show you why. So we're going to go and do the same thing again. We're going to activate this checkpoint. We're going to kill ourselves down to our last life. Alright, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to switch characters. And that's golden. It's golden. We have four lives remaining. The problem comes when we switch characters back. Notice how that checkpoint disappeared in the background and this one didn't activate. This is a dead checkpoint. This means that we were on our final live or life anyway and the game decided... Uh, well, normally when you have lives remaining on a checkpoint, the game's going to keep track of that on the checkpoint and you can reactivate that checkpoint. I noticed this in Little Big Planet 1 and it persists in Little Big Planet 3. We're abusing that. The problem is there's a special case in the game's engine for when you're on your final life, when it starts blinking red at you. When that happens and you deactivate the checkpoint by doing this, the checkpoint dies. You can no longer reactivate it, not even with electricity. It's it's done. It's dead. That's not good. This is a bug. This fundamentally breaks our single-player co-op system. We can no longer... Effectively, this means that as long as we are active on this checkpoint, we cannot play as this character. The character that activates this checkpoint. We cannot play as them. Um, and here's why. If I kill myself... I have gone out of bounds, technically. And in fact, I actually lost a life for the inactive character. So this fundamentally breaks the entire single-player co-op system. We have a bug on our hands. Um, we have a huge design flaw, we have a huge problem, and we need to somehow fix it. And that is something that I have not figured out yet. Um, and I'm gonna leave that to you guys, um, to figure this out, or to come up with, with an idea. I have my own idea. My own idea right now is to make it so that whenever you are on your last life as the first character, you have two choices. Your first choice is to either continue playing as that character and risk dying and you fail the level. Okay. The second choice is to play as the second character and then you cannot switch back until you find a new checkpoint. That is a solution to the problem, but it's not exactly how Little Big Planet Co-op behaves, so I'm, I haven't settled on it being my final decision yet. But that's why I'm bringing it to you guys and showing you the problem that I have here, and maybe you guys have an idea of what I could do. If not, then I'm going to settle on that solution that I just proposed, uh, but I do want to try some other things based on what you guys say. But with that said, that's going to do it for this video. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. I hope you find this interesting. I hope you find the Discord server that's in the link in the description below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.